Hi, this is Jesse from BarShark. We've put together this video to give you a brief but detailed overview of how antimatter is played. First, let's take a look at our pieces. First thing you'll need to do is pick a crew. Each crew has a unique playstyle and comes with a deck of crew cards which are played as abilities during the game. In this demo, we picked the aggressive Ferron, the mobile Isan, and the balanced Malian. Your flagship is called a Rock. While slow, it's the only ship in your fleet that can carry cargo. You also have two support ships called Ravens. While they can't transport cargo, they're highly mobile. Each player also receives four bridges. Ravens can build bridges, which allow your Rock to fast travel through the conflux. Now that we've assembled our crews, let's dive into the universe. Our board represents the Conflux, a system of six planets orbiting around the engine star Odea. Odea is represented by the hex at the center of the board. The Conflux is saturated with a substance known as Nephelium, or just Neph. Represented by poker chips, Neph serves as the primary currency in the Conflux, as well as our game. White chips are worth 25 Neph. Red are worth 50. Blue are worth 100 and black are worth 500. Neph chips are interspersed throughout the board at the top of play and designated as plunder. If a player lands one of their ravens on a plunder, they collect both the Neph on the space as well as a crew card from their crew deck. Crew cards acquired during the loot phase are placed face down and added to the player's hand only after the loot phase has ended. Rocks can't loot plunder. Planets are a major point of interest for players looking for a big payday. Landing your rock on a planet allows you to pick up cargo, represented by the corresponding colored cube. You also pick up two Neph chips of the corresponding color. No chip bonuses are awarded for landing on the purple or green planets. To keep play fresh, the starting points of the planets are chosen by players at the top of each game. Additionally, each planet moves a set number of hexes at the end of each turn. Another point of interest are dive bars, represented by the dive hexes. Landing any of your ships on a dive hex allows you to loot it. You can either fill your crew hand or discard it and draw a new one. At the edges of our universe, you'll find the bases, represented by the base hexes. Players place their ships at a base of their choosing, and the game begins. Each round of play is divided by two phases, the loot and the poker phase. The game begins with the loot phase. During the loot phase, players move their ships around the board in order to acquire plunder and cargo. Each ship can only acquire one loot per phase. Each player gets up to three burns per phase. Burns are used to move your ships throughout the conflux. The rock moves only one hex per burn. Ravens can move up to two hexes per burn. Players can choose to distribute their burns however they see fit. The Malian player uses their first burn to move their raven two hexes. They also drop a bridge in their wake. The Malian player uses the second burn on the same raven. They collect the blue chip worth 100 Nephelium, draw a crew card from their crew deck, and place it down in front of them. The Malian player uses their last burn to move their rock out of base. The bridge allows the rock to move one space for free, so the Malian player moves two spaces with their final burn. Nice. The Isan player uses their first burn to move their rock one hex onto the green planet sitting outside their base. They pick up the corresponding green cargo piece. The Isan player uses their second burn to move one of their ravens two hexes to the nearby plunder. The Isan player then plays the Scrapper crew card from their hand. This allows their Raven to loot twice this turn. They collect the white poker chip, worth 25 Neph, and draw a crew card. The Isan player uses their last burn on the same Raven, moving it two spaces to the red plunder. Before ending their turn, the Isan player places a bridge in front of its Raven. The 
Pharon player uses their first burn to move their Raven one hex to the White Plunder directly outside their base. The Pharon player uses their second burn to move their Raven two hexes to the other nearby Plunder. They pick up the Neff, draw a crew card, and place a bridge ahead of the first one. They also drop a bridge just outside their base. The Pharon player uses their final burn to move their rock through the gates and one hex onto the red planet. They pick up the corresponding piece of cargo and two red chips and end their turn. Next up, the poker phase. During the poker phase, players play a hand of Texas Hold'em style poker. It's an opportunity to further your gains and weaken your enemies. All players are obliged to enter an initial bet called an ante. The ante starts small, but grows as the game progresses. For the first round of play, the ante is 25 net. Since the Malian player went first, they'll be the first dealer. The dealer changes each round, always shifting to the player on the previous dealer's left. Starting with the player on their left, the Malian player deals two cards to each player in a clockwise motion. These two cards are called pocket cards, or just your pocket. Keeping your hand a secret from other players is vital to your success. That said, for the purposes of this demo, we'll be playing face up. Grifters are unique to Antimatter's version of poker, and a bit of a double-edged sword. If you're holding a grifter in your pocket, you can't win in a showdown. But, if your opponent's full, you'll get a big bonus on top of the pot. Those who want to play it safe may discard the grifter in exchange for a new card. Betting order is the same as the deal order. It starts with the player on the dealer's left and goes clockwise from there. The Isan player checks. The Pharaon player plays Grunt, which obliges the bank to bid 50 Neff on their behalf. The Malian player calls with 50 Neff of their own. The Isan player calls as well. With everyone in, the dealer turns three cards over. This is commonly known as the flop. Cards placed in the middle are communal cards. Players use them in conjunction with their pocket to construct the best possible hand. The Isan player has nothing, so they check. The Pharaon player has two pair and bets 100. The Malian player plays Hustler. This reduces the Pharaon bet to zero. This forces the Pharaon player to check. The Malian player then checks. With checks all around, the dealer turns the next card over. This card is commonly called the turn card, or just the turn. The Isan player checks. The Pharaon player bets 100. The Malian player calls. The Isan player folds. The dealer flips the last communal card. This is commonly referred to as the river card, or just the river. The Isan player is out, so betting passes to the next player. The Pharaon player raises 50 Neff. The Malian player calls. The players show their cards. The Malian player wins and collects their chips. They also move first in the next loot phase. Before the round closes, the planets revolve a set number of spaces around their orbits. The number of tiers on the base of each planet tells you how many hexes the planet moves per round. And there you have it, a full round of antimatter. Thanks for watching, and please donate so we can send you a copy of your own.